Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to talk about the Lumberjack PT305 planer that I've got. Uh, I've done a couple of reviews on it now and this is an update because we've had a little bit of an issue that's come up and I wanted to explain to everyone uh, what the problem was, how we fixed it and, uh, and yeah, and how it's working now that we've come up with the fix. Okay, cool. Let's get into it then. So before we start today guys, I would like to ask a huge favor of you all. Um, if you enjoy the content and you enjoy the videos that I put out, it would massively help the channel out if you could uh, tap on the like over here, hit the subscribe button, which keeps you up to, up to date when I put a video up. And if you've hit the notification bell up here, all that's gonna do is YouTube will notify you when I put a video up. It, like I said, it massively helps the channel out, lets me know that um, you guys appreciate what I'm doing, that you enjoy the content that I'm putting up and, um, and that I'm in the right ballpark with it all. All right, cool, let's crack on. Okay then, so this is the Lumberjack PT305, the 300mm 12 inch floor standing planer thicknesser. Uh, we've had this for a while now and we've run hundreds and hundreds of board feet of uh, timber through it. Really, really great bit of kit, something I genuinely love um, to use. I did a review on it a while back and I noticed a couple comments on there from people saying that they had problems with the machine not feeding timber into it. So if you haven't used one of these before, it'll have, it's got automatic feed rollers in here, uh, just down here. Uh, what you do is you put your timber in and it hits the feed rolls and it pulls it through the planer. So you're not having to shove sticks through there, bits of wood, nice and safe. Okay, so what tends to happen in the workshop is that we will use a machine for a while on a big project and then it might end up sitting there for uh, like a month or two where we're off doing something else. So we hadn't had a problem with the machine, but I wanted to come back and check to see if we were having the same issue, uh, which we were, right? I was going to put the timber in, obviously everything was starting up, turning, great. Go to put the timber in, feed it in, and it's not pulling through. Now this kind of blew our mind a little bit because um, it worked perfectly the last time we used it. I didn't know we were having any issues. So I decided to take it apart and have a look to see what the issue was. Okay, so we've identified that there's a fault, i.e. it's not feeding the timber through. So <clears throat> machine side's come off. I wanted to show you the process that we went through when we were trying to fault find the issue, just to see if this helps anybody. Just the process might help somebody in the future uh, when you're having an issue with a machine. Um, okay, so if you'd seen the previous video, this is real simple setup. We have the main motor here, or no, sorry, we've got the main motor here, um, and then off of the main motor, it comes up and it powers the um, planer feed here. Off of that planer feed, there's like a, uh, like a power takeoff bolt, I guess, uh, which is this green one. This green one powers this pulley, and from that, it goes into here, into a bunch of gears, sprockets, pulls this chain, um, which moves these two, which are the feed rollers. Um, so we knew that's how, the, how it should work. So with the machine side off, obviously if you do this, do it at your own risk, don't blame me, don't lose a finger, don't muck around, it's not my fault. But, so what we did, we took the side off the machine and watched it whilst it was running. Now what was happening was, is that all of this is spinning, everything's working, the belt is moving. Now, one of the first things that I did, one of the things that I mentioned in the initial review, was I really like the fact that you could adjust this. So obviously if the belt begins to stretch, we can adjust this forward a little bit, backwards a little bit, just to get it to sit correctly, get enough tension on this belt. So that's the first thing we did. We tried to move it over a little bit more, get enough tension on it, and it worked. Um, well, no, we got the tension on the belt, but the problem that we really had was, I don't know if you can see it, there's a bolt just here, and this is the lever. So there's only maybe, I think about a mil, maybe a mil and a half there, to allow movement this way, which is the way that we needed it. Right, so to get the belt off, real simple. It might look a little bit complicated, but it's not, I promise you. And there was just a couple of things you need to do. Um, first off, there is uh, an Allen, you need a big old Allen key in here, and, um, and it's maybe like a five mil, five, six mil Allen key. And there's a 13 mil, I think it is, from memory bolt head round the other side, inside. Um, obviously, spanner, Allen key, pop it, pull this pin out. Once you pull this pin out, this um, pulley then drops down. So that's the first thing you need to do. Obviously, you're gonna uh, wiggle this belt around off of it. Then you need to be able to get in there um, and you need to get it over the top of uh, this pulley just here. 
So once you get to get it over the top of this one, this belt's in the way. So what you're going to do is you're just going to rotate this round and slightly pull this belt out. And once it pulls the belt out, it comes off nice and easy, right? And then it just lifts off. You can loop it round and through, thread that back onto that pulley, put that onto here, just rotate it round, just gently move it over, and it will seat itself in those grooves, right? Job's good, and nice and simple. So then it's just a case of engaging the belt, turning it on, sticking a bit of timber through, and seeing if it beats. Okay, so this is the old belt. You can see here we've got like a nice textured surface. If we move along here, you can see this is where the belt has been slipping. It's all shiny and nice and smooth. Nice little direction of travel there, look. But yeah, so this was the issue. So we thought, right, we'll get this off. And we got this off and lined it up with a new belt. Now, the new bolt belt was about, there was like a five mil gap over here. So this one had obviously stretched out. Okay, so you think, stick it all back together, new belt, all nice and tight, and it's gonna work. And it sort of did and it sort of didn't. We had a couple of issues that we need to look at as, that, as well. So, a couple of things that are gonna be causing you an issue if your uh, planer isn't feeding correctly. First off, you're gonna get a buildup of resin and um, just general muck on this table. So the first thing you wanna do, or the first thing we did was we got some acetone, cleaned this off with some acetone, and then got some uh, machine wax on there, waxed it down, plenty of wax on there, let it dry, buffed it off, as you can see, we've got a nice, shiny, well, you can see the inside of it. That's how super shiny it is now. Second thing you need to check when you've got a planer with steel feed rollers is are they clean now? Obviously, don't go put your hand in the machine that's turned on, make sure it's unplugged and fully isolate before you do anything like this. Uh, so you've got one feed roller here and another feed roller here and you can see the serrations on it. Now these aren't very big, they're, you know, well, I don't know, maybe like quarter of a mil uh, deep. So real easy to be gummed up with resin and same as for the uh, table. So what we did, again, we took some acetone, um, we cleaned them, rotated them, cleaned them, rotated, cleaned, rotated. We did that to both feed rollers. Then what we did, put everything back together, tried to chuck some wood through. Did it work? So it works, super pleased. Really, really, really happy now to have this back up and running. It's a really nice bit of kit. Um, so why do I think it broke? So there's a couple of things. Well, why did I think there was an issue with the belt? Uh, so first off, it's important to remember it wasn't just the belt that there was a problem. It was also a buildup of uh, resin or whatever it was, sap, whatever you want, on um, the feed table and the feed rollers, which were creating a problem. I wonder, could it maybe have been that there was a build-up and then it's put extra attention on the belt? I don't think that was the issue. I, I think what's more of a problem, personally, I think what's more of an issue is the fact that it's been extremely cold these last few months. We've had a quite cold winter, well, we've had a cold snap in the winter. And I know for some guys, you know, minus 10 Celsius isn't particularly cold, but here in the UK, that's mega cold for us. And I wonder whether that maybe these machines have been sat in a workshop, in a shed, with that lever engaged, so tension on the belt, and maybe think of it like a bandsaw blade. Uh, so obviously whenever you use a bandsaw, you need to loosen the tension off, because otherwise that blade's gonna uh, stretch out and then it will end up snapping at the weld point. And I wonder whether that's maybe what's happening with these. Then maybe there's something to do with the materials. I'm not a huge material science guy, but maybe there's something to do with the materials in the belt. Maybe uh, Lumberjack maybe need a belt with uh, extra reinforcement in there to stop it from stretching. I don't know, but personally, I would think that it's a combination of like the cold, leaving that lever engaged, and then having issues with not um, correctly cleaning the feed rollers and feed table. Uh, as with any machines that you've got, waxing the, the table, whether it's your table saw, uh, anything that's metal in a workshop wants to be waxed to stop it from rusting up, and uh, a feed table on a uh, plane is no different. It just gives it that nice smooth surface and it protects it. 
and then those feed rollers, get those cleaned. I used acetone on mine because um, it just dissolves everything. Uh, so yeah, that's a really good thing to do. So how do we fix it? Uh, we change the belt over, we retention the belt with that little Allen key. We have uh, cleaned the feed table and waxed it, and then we cleaned the feed rollers, and we're good to go. If you've had this same issue, I really would appreciate a comment below just to let us know um, what the issue was, because I've been chatting to Lumberjack to try and get this sorted out, because it's, it's a really, really good machine that's been let down by a small little nickel now. Just one of those things, right, when you bring a new product, but it's, I would hate for a company who are clearly trying to make an effort um, to bridge that gap between like the cheaper screw fix brand tools and um, some of the more expensive like axminster tools i think even now this when it's for sale is like 900 quid nine maybe just under a thousand and then when you look at your other options for a 12 mil floor standing planer you're talking like 1800 quid and the cheaper ones than this you're probably talking like four five hundred pounds nowhere near as good as this one and this even gives the more expensive ones a run for its money. So yeah, so I think it'd be a real shame for a company like Lumberjack that's really trying to put the effort in here and provide quality tools at a low price um, to get screwed up by a little niggle. So if you've had any issues, please let me know in the comments below. If you do have a problem, try these fixes first. Try the acetone, sorting out the feed rollers and waxing, or cleaning and waxing your bed because that's always the first thing you should be trying. And, uh, and yeah, I hope we've helped somebody out. Let us know below. If you could do me a favour, like I said earlier, comment, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, it really helps us. Um, I think uh, when the last time I looked at the analytics, uh, the people that watch my channel, like 98% of the people that watch the videos, watch the channel, don't even subscribe. So um, it really helps me to know that I'm putting the right content out there, that you guys lunk it, like it, lunk it, <laughs> you guys like it, and it's worthwhile me doing. Alright, cool. You'll take it easy, you have a good time, and I shall see you next time.